So please welcome on the stage Jarda Kubíček. Thank you. So hello folks, it's nice to see so many faces uh, over here. And before we start with the performance, uh, let's start with the in, uh, it, introducing ourselves. Um, I will start myself. Uh, I'm Yaroslav, uh, coming from a team which is called Developer Experience. We are responsible for developing various three tools for our uh, other developers in uh, product teams, making them more uh, efficient. And we, uh, right now, uh, performance is definitely one of the uh, hot topics for us. Uh, now I would like to also ask uh, some something uh, from you. I'm curious, I uh, guess most of you are developers as well. Uh, so I'm curious how many of you are monitoring performance of your application? Very a lot. Of, uh, performance of uh, front end. Okay. And how you are doing it uh, with writing web performance tests? Okay, not right. the number of hands uh, dropped quite significantly. And who is using uh, some real user measurement tools? I will speak about Datadog, so it can be something different. Okay, more people, okay. And who is uh, happy with uh, performance of the application you are developing? No one. <laughs> so all, all of us, okay. Not even single person. Okay. So let's uh, start with uh, talk, uh, web performance. Uh, we decided to split this topic uh, basically into two parts. One is load performance, another is in-app performance. Load performance uh, involves everything that happens during the initial, initial load of the application, and uh, in-app uh, is everything that happens after. I consider this division quite important. important for any single-page application, application because uh, once the application is loaded, you can uh, stay in an application for quite a long time, and uh, uh, initial load is just a fraction of time, and when uh, customers are sending some reports, it's slow. It might not mean it's uh, slow because it's... Uh, loading slowly, but because the interaction with, within the application is not performing well. So when we look on uh, load performance, we have a bunch of uh, well-defined uh, metrics we can measure and observe. It can be time to first byte, like the time it takes server to respond with something, Bundle size, um, of course, it's the uh, largest content full paint. Uh, the time it takes to render the largest portion of the content, which is usually the main thing you still want to see. And also, it's a uh, first input delay. Uh, that's the time it takes Bruce uh, application to be ready to start responding to use uh, inputs. But how it's uh, with the uh, in-app performance? Uh, that's the question. For load performance, 
uh, we have these nice metrics, we have core web vitals uh, that are being promoted for a long time and uh, in app performance it seems quite neglected. And the fact that in the uh, case of product board, uh, half of our user base spent more than 16 minutes in the application, so the initial load is just a fraction of it, even if it's slow. Uh, slow. But uh, there is actually one metric uh, coming. It will uh, become part of the core vitals that is addressing uh, in-app performance much better. It's interaction uh, to next paint. So, uh, what is it about? Suppose you have application, it has some a nice button, and uh, when you hit the button, it uh, opens some drop-down. Interaction to next paint is the time it takes uh, between the user click and the visual response, uh, like showing the drop-down or hiding it. And what can happen, since we are in JavaScript world with a single thread, is that there might be already another task running. Uh, so the response to the user click can be uh, delayed by this long task, and the processing of the click can take also some uh, additional time. So uh, this is called long task. What exactly it is? The basic idea is that you should uh, respond uh, within 100 uh, millisecond to any user input. And long task is everything that takes more than uh, 50 milliseconds. By 50 milliseconds, the idea is that uh, if any, anything takes up to 50 milliseconds, then you still have the remaining time, the remaining half, to handle the user uh, action itself. And you can fit with this thin, with this, uh, uh, 100 millisecond time frame. So, how does a long task look like in application? It can look like this. Uh, in this example, we have a navigation uh, in a product board where you have folders with some items, with some uh, list of roadmaps, and the user clicks on a folder to open it. Uh, what ha happens is that for two seconds, nothing is happening. This is, I can imagine, quite frustrating to user. And when you open the browser, uh, uh, DevTools, when you open the DevTools in uh, Chrome and switch to the Performance uh, tab, you can see there something like this. I call it uh, Yellow Mountain of Sadness. <laughs> it uh, shows you that the C CPU was running on 100%. Uh, running some JavaScript. And the smaller hills uh, should be rendering of it. I'm correct. So, what we want to do is to know about these cases uh, which are happening in our applications to our real users, where these things are happening. We started uh, monitoring this with two tools. Uh, first one is Datadog Real User Measurement, RAM, and the second uh, are web 
performance test where we use uh, Puppeteer and Lighthouse. Uh, so let's start with uh, Datadoc. Uh, Datadoc allows us to monitor all the uh, behavior of our users in the application. Uh, it collects uh, which elements I click um, based on uh, some test ID, we can see which elements uh, they are it interacting with. And we can see also the list of all long tasks that are associated with these actions. Besides that, we can also define our um, custom attributes, like uh, what was the size of the data in a board, or what is the company name, or uh, user role in, within the space, and similar. This uh, allow us to create dashboards where we can see what, which segments of our customers are most affected. And last but not least, uh, you, you have possibility to uh, review the video recording where you can dig deeper into all these issues and what uh, users are doing in our application. Yeah, and before we start uh, talking about what we exactly measure uh, with Datadoc and Product Board, uh, the question is what exactly we want to know. Is it number of long tasks? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, if you check this example, uh, is it like in the first case we have only one long task, but uh, and uh, in second case we have four. But which scenario is worse? Like as a developer, I would say it depends. Uh, when user clicks uh, after that one long task has finished, he might not notice anything and it will work for him. But there is quite high likelihood that the first case might be more frustrating because uh, when some user interaction happens with, uh, with a 10 uh, time, uh, there is much longer uh, delay for to show something, to show some visual feedback to the user. So that's the question we, we need to ask. And uh, for these purposes, um, it's uh, good to not focus on solely on uh, number of long tasks, but also look on a total blocking time, which is uh, some of all these excessive times uh, together in an application. So if a long task was running for 100 millisecond, it was blocking interaction for uh, 50 milliseconds. And if you put the sum of all these tasks together, you get the number which uh, represents the problem, in my opinion, in a better way. Uh, so what are the things we measure with Datadoc? Uh, first, most important is uh, long task time, or more or less like this uh, total blocking time per active minute. Of what we discovered is that uh, for average customer, it's much below one second. So it looks okayish. But for some customers with more data, it rises uh, up 
and it may be over one second uh, or even more. So it's suddenly a different story. Uh, also, uh, we have some other metrics where we track this total blocking time per view. So we know if it's happening in feature board, if it's happening in uh, insights nodes or roadmaps and similar, which view is causing the most issues. So we know where to jump and start doing something with it. And this is some of uh, examples of our discoveries. Uh, one anticipation was that the low performance is strictly related to the amount of data on the board. So if you load some huge board with many items, it's likely going to be much slower. It's not that easy in our case because there are customers that have like uh, up to 1,000 uh, items on a single board and it's working for them. And at the same time, there is customer with, uh, that have a much uh, smaller board and as you can see, uh, add up, uh, they are having quite a lot of long tasks for almost the whole session. And the thing, what, what's uh, different is that uh, in the first case, it's customer that has a lot of data in overall, and we are uh, overfetching. Uh, this data and it blows the memory and uh, when they are uh, searching or when they are uh, uh, changing filters, it needs to process all this loaded data in a browser. So that was about Datadoc. Uh, as I mentioned, we use also Lighthouse to measure in-app performance, but wait, uh, I mentioned um, um, like all the time I'm speaking mostly about in-app performance and now uh, I'm going to talk about Lighthouse. Uh, you might know Lighthouse primarily as a tool that take some URL, it loads the URL, and it gives you some HTML report. This is the basic, uh, basic usage, uh, how you can use Lighthouse. Uh, but if you use it programmatically, uh, there is uh, now more functionality you can do with it. Uh, about one year ago, they added uh, more modes how you can run uh, Lighthouse. So it doesn't need to be only uh, page load, but it can be also flow, something which is called flow. So in this code snippet, you can see uh, how it uh, can work. Um, what What's happening that um, it works together with Puppeteer. Uh, so first we need to initialize and open a browser with the Puppeteer. And then we can start the flow, uh, start the time, some time spent, uh, what we want to measure. And with the Puppeteer we can click somewhere in the application and then finish our time span and let uh, Lighthouse generate our report for us. So that's uh, how you can uh, use Lighthouse to measure uh, in-app performance. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm a quiz. Uh, how many of you use uh, 
lighthouse in any way? Okay, quite many of you. And is there anyone who use this feature over the day? Cool. Okay. And who would consider using it when you see it there now? Okay. Sounds promising. <laughs> Uh, so hopefully I will sort sort uh, light out to more of you. Uh, when I show you some discoveries, it's just a bit of all the things it's reporting. Lighthouse it's a great uh, it's great in uh, one aspect. In a data doc, you need to decide how you will interpret the data. In a lighthouse. Uh, when you open the report, uh, it active in many cases it actively gives you advices where to focus, what you should optimize, what well, like what's causing problems. So it contains its interpretation of the data. And uh, in our uh, example, for example, we discovered that. Uh, the list of nodes and in, in, insights is not very optimized, most likely because there is excessive number of elements in it. So, as you, uh, uh, the pictures in lighthouses are quite small, but uh, it gives you small thumbnail where you can see the picture of the component that is causing this problem. And it, it's a list of uh, notes in uh, our application. And uh, in the first case, uh, it gave us uh, advice that uh, we are loading quite a huge third party library that is actually needed only by the subset of our customers. So, what we can do is to uh, put it into separate chunk and uh, lazy load it only when it's needed. Yeah, and Lighthouse in Datadoc, yeah, so we can connect these two things together. What we are doing, uh, we are running these uh, tests after every release to production. And once we get the report, we process it uh, and send a symmetric to the data doc. So in this example, what I'm showing you uh, are some data uh, for the test that uh, just opens feature board and nothing uh, is clicked. And what's happening, there are some uh, background changes uh, happening. Uh, there are uh, some live, live updates coming for the features uh, the user is viewing, and we are measuring how these background changes, these live updates, are affecting the performance. And as you can see, uh, it has some effect on our application. For example, uh, frame rate drops from 60 to around 42. So in some cases, we discovered that in some cases, when multiple users are working with the same board, it becomes slow because uh, there are uh, many, many uh, live updates coming between uh, different windows. Of the videos. Okay. Uh, so when I compare Datadog and uh, Web Path tests, uh, what I would use again? Uh, that's a good question. To be honest, I'm quite uh, happy with uh, Datadog right now. Uh, both tools require money, like in Datadoc you pay for the license. In case of web path tests, you need to spend some time on it to 
uh, make it worth and make maintain. And to be honest, uh, the biggest downside of uh, these web paths is this maintenance because you work with Puppeteer and Puppeteer is not exactly friendly uh, library, at least from my point of view. Uh, where, whereas Datadoc works out of the box. But in my case, it's uh, nice to combine these two things together. In Datadoc, you see uh, overall performance and you can like uh, use it to spot uh, specific problems. And once you uh, acknowledge these specific parts that are causing problems, you can then go and write the performance test for uh, that scenario. And when you are when you start fixing uh, performance issues in the application, uh, and you are releasing updates and hoping it will get better, you can uh, use these web performance tests to as a reality check whether you are successful or not. <laughs> okay, uh, so this is probably everything uh, I have for you, uh, and thanks for listening, and I think we can go, there are some questions. Yeah, so uh, are there Puppety alternatives for the lab path test? If so, why did you choose Puppety? Uh, that's a good question. If I had a chance, I would never ever use Puppety, but I had to because uh, that's how uh, Lighthouse is built. If you want to use it programmatically, uh, it's built to be used in hand with the puppeteer. Uh, performance, uh, like, is it the uh, uh, long tasks? Yeah. What is the biggest pain point you have in your uh, performance? Is it the long tasks or is it uh, LCP or something else? Uh, I think we have multiple things happening uh, simultaneously in the application. But uh, the biggest issue, like the common denominator, is uh, overfetching. The fact that if you are a large company with a lot of data, uh, what we are still doing is that we load a lot of data uh, right in the initial load, and it lives and occupies the memory and, you know, of the browser. And when you are changing filters, typing somewhere, in many cases, like it iterates over all these items. So, uh, as I mentioned, it's not only about number of features, but uh, these uh, entities, like features, they have labels, they uh, teams, and many many other entities uh, like this, and like these additional entities are uh, loaded into the browser. And that's probably what's causing the most headaches. And uh, are you also tracking the uh, size of the requests or the payloads in the Datadoc, for example? Uh, we, we measure a bundle size. Uh, we, and uh, response time of some requests that are uh, that they get during the initial load, but we don't um, uh, 
so far we don't measure like the response time later you know during the uh, in app performance not yet yeah so thanks for showing the flow feature from the puppeteer it's it's a pretty nice one but i'm not clear on what are the results from that and how can you say yeah these are good and these are bad uh yeah uh it depends uh it depends on a data set uh, you are opening with the property in a browser uh, what we are doing is that we have some uh, on production we have uh, some testing space uh where uh with the fixed data set so each time that uh, the test is executed it's executed against the same size uh, of the data and more like instead of checking like the absolute numbers for example uh, like total blocking time it give us it's six seconds uh, for the whole test is it good is it bad like it's definitely bad like six seconds it's horrible but uh, what the idea is to not look that much on the number, but uh, on the trend. If we are, if we are working and uh, actively trying to address the problems, uh, we observe the trend. Is it going better or is it same or even worse? Like, is, is, is there a possibility that it's even getting worse? It. So, so for that you are using Datadog then? Yeah, yeah, like that's to check the trend. Yeah. Exactly. That's we, why we are sending the results to Datadog to have this possibility to check the trends. Like in HTML report, you will get advices what to focus on. And in Datadog, we see these trends. Right. Thanks. So have you also considered uh, checking, uh, for example, the Lighthouse uh, programmatically in a, in a CI on a pull request? Um, to be honest, uh, there is uh, such an uh, option. We have it, but we don't use it now. Uh, uh, um, to be honest, I added this as a feature two months ago and today uh it was just first time i use it myself so yeah it's possible definitely but we don't use it so far that much okay i guess it's uh, all i should give space to other speakers uh, so thank you very much for listening if you want uh, to discuss it more we can do it at the back and yeah thanks <laughs>